like a lot of young people are, I was looking for a way to, to matter. And FIRE did that really quickly. And I think what we're talking about is, when does it become you? When does all of a sudden the thing that you're doing become who you are? This is the Wildland Fire Lessons Learned Center podcast. I'm Alex Victora, Assistant Center Director of the Wildland Fire Lessons Learned Center here in sunny Tucson, Arizona. Howdy! It's been a long fire season. 2017 is in the books for the most part for most of us, and uh, we've been away from the podcast for too long. Glad to get back at it this week with a cool topic, and the topic is identity. Why identity, you might ask? Great question. Let's get into it. We've been talking about identity all summer long, it seems like. Identity relates to some of the other things we talk about around here. Culture, belonging, and things like tribes. Us versus them type stuff. All of those concepts relate to decision-making. How decisions are made on the fire line is at the heart of so much of what we think about and who the groups and individuals are that make decisions on the fire line and how those identities interact is worthy of discussion, no doubt. Identity is about more than all this stuff, however, and we've been grappling with this. How and why should we talk about identity? Recently, we turned on one of the recording machines down here in Tucson and captured a discussion between two voices. One is familiar. Travis Dotson, our center analyst, resident deep thinker, artist, and the only qualified safety officer on the staff. The other voice is a new guy. Who's the new guy? The new guy is the old guy's boss. (laughs) Wait, now I'm confused. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so my name is Britt Rosso. I'm the director of the Wild Empire Lesson Learn Center. Been in the job since November 2010. Uh, so we're just past the seven seven year mark. Been doing this now. S- seven years here in Tucson. Yeah. And yeah. You, your first season was your first wildland fire season was um, 1984. 1984. Yep. Okay. That's a little bit of time. Collectively, Travis and Britt have a wealth of both wildland fire and general life experience. They bring some great insights to this discussion of identity. Let's listen in now as Travis and Britt. Talk about identity. I was looking for a way to to matter. And FIRE did that really quickly. People were proud of me. People congratulated me. I made money. You know, that's a quick way to matter. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And feel like, you know, you're growing up or something like that. Um, but what, but looking back on it, there's all these things that were happening that I didn't realize, you know, I was picking people out. Oh man, I want to be like him or, oh man, she's a badass or, (laughs) you know what I mean? I was picking those people out and trying to do things to emulate them psychologically and emotionally and all of those things. I was building an identity, which I didn't realize. And that's just a normal thing. That's not a bad thing. Yeah. I guess what what I want to talk about is what happens to that as as your life and your career goes on and what are the what are the challenges when your identity is or is not <laughs> wrapped around <laughs> what you do especially fire and you know the 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 tribal element and how tight knit and all those things that we we say are positive things like what are what happens um, when that gets tested I guess I don't know is your experience similar you, yeah I think that um, so many of us get into the business not trying to make a career of it yeah we just end up there somehow some way and all of a sudden you get exposed to this thing <clears throat> this this wildland fire thing that you never really knew much about and all of a sudden you matter. All of a sudden you have a sense of purpose. All of a sudden you're just like this eye opening. Oh my God, this, this is it. I can't believe how much this means to me to be part of this team, this tribe, this organization. Um, and then once you, for me, 
once I felt like this is the deal, this is where I'm heading. And whether you fall into it backwards or go in it with eyes wide open, you know, full speed ahead, all of a sudden you're in it. I, I think all that kind of just continues to build upon our identity, what, what somehow became our career. And next thing you know, you look back and you're like, I guess I'm doing this. This is where I'm headed. Yeah, and I think it's 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 easy to to uh, to say, well, yeah, okay, this is what I'm going to do until I retire, or you know what I mean. It thinks of career, but do you ever wake up and say, oh, this is who I am? This hmm. is hmm. is is there ever that? I I think there's you know people cross that threshold and they go, well, yeah, I just got into it to you know pay for college, but. I ended up staying like a lot of people have that story and they yeah. do have that, that, that realization that, okay, well, okay, I'll, I'll make this my career yeah. or, you know, people have known from day one, like, oh yeah, I can't, I'm headed towards that permanent and I can't wait. You yeah. know, I, 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 I always talk about all the, the wasted furloughs. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like I wasted a bunch of my furloughs, you know, chasing winter work. Right. Um, me you know and I was because I was an all-in type of person and I um what I wanted to be doing was fire stuff even if that was stacking sticks or um you know training um you know signing on to um to teach all the refreshers or whatever you know what I mean right. that that was just who, who I what I showed up at the office on my furlough and like and wanting to check out training videos <laughs> so I could take them home and, and right. watch them on my own time, right. you know? Um, and I think that, that again, it's telling to, to, that I now feel embarrassed about that. But, um, the, you know, yeah, I was all in, I wanted the career. I got the permanent full-time job and I was stoked and all that stuff, but I never quite had a, have this moment of like, oh man, I'm, I'm really, I'm investing a lot in this. And nobody ever sat me down and said, hey, do you understand the consequences of investing in this? Uh, one of my old bosses used to say, you know, you're one stump hole knee twist away from not being able to be a hot shot anymore. Yeah, you're right. So what are my options? <laughs> uh, um, but it got me thinking a little bit when you kept reminding me of that. Uh, I think there's a multitude of different ways you can, you know, uh, physically or literally get smashed and you know physically there's all kinds of mechanisms of injury we know about the hazards of the job and then i think the thing that we um dance around the edges of and don't talk much about in this in the services those maybe we'll call them mental or emotional injuries that could potentially happen and that can be uh, things on the home front with a family friction with a family um, you miss the, all the kids birthdays you miss your anniversary um uh, which cr could create friction at home with your relationship with your family. Um, and then that there's no way to, to draw a bright line and separate that from your, from your day job. How, how easy is it to keep, to not bring our day job stuff home? <laughs> All right. How good are we at doing that? Well, I think it's, it's impossible, right? right? I mean, it's, uh, that's just not realistic. No. So why would we think we couldn't, that the, the stuff that happens at home, not, bleed over into our day job. And then especially when the, when all the things that we talk about as being a benefit and a draw to this line of work, which is the crew becomes your family, mm -hmm. you know, that, mm -hmm. that you, you, you literally spend so much time and, and it's, it's intimacy. That's not a word that we, um, we like to use in this business, but <laughs> that's, that's actually what it is. This, I think, again, it's this blender full of stuff that ends up being our identity. Sure. And in fire, we have a fire family. We call it that. We call each other brothers and sisters. How do you, how do you deal with that? You know, yeah. when, when we're all in, when it's 100% the job, and all of a sudden something really close to us, linked to the job, gets smashed. Because there's a whole bunch of different ways. I know I, <laughs> I've, I've, I've had a a few of them and some of them are great. Some of them are real positive. Sometimes it's just all it is is some salty person asking you tough questions, yep. which is a great way to have it happen. Yep. But there's some awful ways to have it happen too. There, there are. And we have a multitude of examples of those in our, you know, in our service and our, in our fire family and, um, everything from, 
you know, where you don't physically get smashed, but you see someone get smashed, whether that's a, a friend or a coworker. Mm -hmm. And that all of a sudden instant realization that that could have been me. You know, I was 10 feet away when, when Johnny got hit by that branch. Um, or that should have been me or that should or have been. Why was it not, you know, no, all right. of that stuff. Right. And that just, man, that, that, that just really can open someone's eyes that, that, that is all in, especially that's all in and, and their identity is 100% whatever they are, hot shot, jumper, engine, uh, mod on a module, whatever it is. And so there's some, there's that kind of concentric rings out. It's like someone getting physically smashed near you. That has an emotional effect, of course. Um, hearing about someone else, you know, not physically seeing it, but hearing about, you know, crew X or engine company, you know, whatever it is, having a near miss close call or a hit, uh, those things, um, something we really don't like to talk about is suicide. And I won't go into that in depth, but when you have a, either hear about it, a firefighter that took their own life, whether that's while they're still working or after they retired, it really makes you, uh, pause and, and think about why, you know, what, we always want to know why. We always are looking for answers as humans. We always wonder why did why did that person I didn't know but was a firefighter like me work a whole career, retire, and then take their own life? Mm -hmm. It may have nothing to do with their career or fire. It might not, and it might, and it might, <laughs> and we'll never know. And then I think there's the then there's the closer to home, a friend. I mm -hmm. mean, you and I lost a good friend mm -hmm. um, who took his life after he retired from fire. Um, and we want to know why, and we'll never know. Mm -hmm. Was it career? Was it life? Was it both? We'll never know. And that's hard. And that's really hard. Mm -hmm. um, it can rock people to their core. And then I think there's the um, uh, being a leader, whether it's a leader of leaders or a leader of, of followers, and then having someone that you're responsible for, yeah, you know, get physically um, either injured or killed in the line of duty or off the clock, mm. you know, yeah. having someone getting T-boned, you know, after work, going home. There's mm. many cases of that. And it, it, it can be devastating to not just you, but to the module and the, and the people that you lead and to your organization. And I think what we're talking about is, I hate to use the word resiliency, but how do you, how do you, how do you deal with that? You know, yeah. when, when we're all in, when it's 100% the job and all of a sudden something really close to us linked to the job gets smashed. Absolutely. And I, and, and I feel like the, the options that we're typically presented with and, and, and the way that we talk about resilience is it's, it's, it's one way that when people say resilience, they're talking about doubling down. Yeah. You know what I mean? being more all in because, you know, to honor somebody or yep. to, you know what I mean? And, and we talk about, Hey, you got, got to get back up on that horse. Um, yep. And we say that a lot, or we say, yeah, man, they're just, they've, they've never been the same ever since that event at, you know, whatever that was. And we say that in a, in a negative way, yep. as if the pre existing the way that they were before the event is the ideal yep. rather than, valuing somebody's new perspective because of whatever, whether it was their divorce or the birth of their child. And, you know, they don't go on as many assignments or, you know, they, they, they um, take leave during the summer. They take leave during what? the summer. What? What is that? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. You can't and, do that. And, and if, if anything is different from that all in, um, then we sort of kind of devalue it. Um, and rather than that might actually be the true resilience. That is what's going to help that person live, be able to live with themselves based on their new reality because hmm. their new reality, you know what I mean? You can't help. That's the way I, I experience it is th that's the new reality. Somebody close to you dies, especially in the line of duty or suicide, whatever it is yeah. as a new reality. Yep. Um, your, your longtime relationship, goes down the tube, then you don't have that support anymore and you feel bad for the part you played in it. Mm -hmm. That's a new reality. Mm -hmm. And how you make sense of that, I feel like is what, what gets judged. Mm -hmm. um, right. Right. And if it's anything other than 
just trying to get back to the way it was. Like, that's the ideal, like, well, yeah, you just need to get back up on that horse and, um, and, oh, they're so risk averse. Now they're risk averse because they're scared of whatever it was. Rocks, trees, whatever. Yeah, exactly. But in terms of how we experience those new realities, how much of that is complicated by how tightly your identity is wrapped around the job. Yeah. Um, and I, I struggle with it because I don't ever want to say that it's a bad thing to be all in, but that's kind of where I drift towards, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. I mean, retirement's the other one. Well, absolutely. And we haven't even talked about that yet. Yeah. It, you know, I'm closing in on, I'm getting close. You know, I knew that decades ago, but it's decades away back then. And all of a sudden now it's months away. That is, uh, I, I've seen, at least in my age bracket, I've seen many of my friends and mentors that are older than me. And some of them go out, arms in the air, crossing, you know, <laughs> crossing the, uh, you know, the New York City Marathon, yeah. breaking the banner, busting through, and they just keep going. And, and you never, you hear from again as friend, but not fire. They're done. Yeah. They're done. They did their career, and it's time for a next chapter in life. They're going to go do something else. And, and whether they had a plan or not, they're going to do something else. Yeah. There'll, there'll always be a fire sure. I mean, you can't make that go away, but they choose a different path. Then there's the group, the general group that crossed the line, um, willingly with a smile. And then the next day, the next week, the next pay period, whatever, they're back doing it. They're carrying that identity over that, over that 57 line and still doing it. And that's okay. They've got a lot to offer, right? They've got I mean, a ton to offer. They've got, you know, 20, 30 plus years of experience that they can offer and share with others, however they choose to share that, whether it's a, a line safety, um, you know, on an IMT, whatever it is. A fire department. A fire department, working for a different fire department and carrying all that knowledge over to a different agency or organization, sure. And then there's the maybe the third group, and there's probably a ton of groups. I'm, I'm oversimplifying it. But then there's a third group that gets dragged across the line <laughs> or pushed across the line, maybe is a better way. <laughs> yeah, right? It's not even a line, it's a cliff. It's a cliff. <laughs> it's a cliff to, to that group. It's like, I'm not ready. Mm-hmm. I, whether that's I haven't accomplished everything mm-hmm. that I wanted to accomplish, and I don't think you ever can, um, if you're all in. Um, um, I'm not financially sound sure. to go from 100% pay to whatever diminished rate of pension you're going to be getting. Or that cliff it looks scary. I don't know who I am. If, I, what, if when I Am I still a firefighter when I go past... What happens to my identity when I go up that cliff? When I when I go across that fifty seven line, does it go away? Am I always no? I'm always a firefighter, but I don't get to hang with the boys and the girls anymore. You know, I don't get to go to the the spring meetings. I don't get to you know whatever it is, go to the station, go to the go to the uh, the guard station, hang out, whatever it is. I don't know if that's a. Uh, I think part of that is not being prepared and not thinking about it, or or just. Um, uh, holding back or holding down reality that's coming coming at you. Sure. And culturally or or organizationally, what do you think the 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 typical views, accepted views are of those categories? Hmm. Is there a preferred or are there the people that we prefer to deal with and then the people that we kinda look down on? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an interesting question. I think you know what Part of me wants to say it really depends. It's, it's you know, case specific, but I think there's generalizations we could agree on that, you know, if um, the group that, group one, we'll call them, that goes across the line and does something else, and yeah, we hear from them as friends, but they're they're out. They're, mm-hmm. man, they're doing something else and they're loving it. Um, and what do we think about them? Is that okay? Did, is it like, oh, really, just like that? Yeah, you're going to walk away? After your you, birthday, you're yeah. just going to walk away from all this. Yeah. I think sometimes some people look at that that way. And I think if you're all in, if you're in the all in crowd, yeah, I can see how, and I've heard, you know, it's like, oh, I guess they're out. They turn their back on yeah. on on us. Yeah. In- Wait, are, are you guys in still or are you out? Yeah. Yeah, so there's that kind of perspective for those that choose to do something else. And then the perspective of those that jump over the 57 line and then 
they're still all in. Yeah. No matter what department, organization, AD, contract, another department, whatever, they're in. How do we look upon them? <laughs> if you're all in, I think it depends where you stand, from where you stand. If you're all in and you see that, man. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. They're sharing all that knowledge, experience based with others, and they're still rocking it. That is I'm down with that. Yeah, but there's then there's a whole other group of people that will man will we throw rocks at those Absolutely. people, especially if what they're doing is AD and as air attack or safety. You know the the classic is they they go out as safety now. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. or ops on a team or something like that. And and there's a group that will that looks down upon that and throws rocks at those people. And we say horrible mean things. You know, like um, geez, like. Get over it, yeah. you know, um, go, go retire, go and don't take opportunities away from those people, you know, coming up, yeah. you know, the that, younger. um, and obviously how you think about and what you say about those instances is, is all about you, yeah. you know what I mean? How you're, how you're feeling. If you're, if you're looking at the, if, if it looks like a cliff to you, that obviously is going to frame how you talk about what other people do Mm -hmm. um but the the what what i want to address is that that when you're that person when when you're saying those things about whatever it is you're saying you're influencing somebody else's path and their perspective Mm -hmm. and that's the part where i get i i get worried about the rocks that we're throwing at those groups um and that it's it like those are real struggles. These aren't things to be taken lightly because as you like, it's, it's entirely possible, plausible, likely that the loss of identity can lead to all kinds of things, health problems, um, addiction problems, um, suicide, all of that. And, and, and in, and for some reason in retirement, because we can see it coming, we're less, I feel like we're less compassionate hmm. in those instances. Hmm. We say like, Hey, well, you, you knew this was coming. You yeah. should have, you should have done your homework. But when it's mid career, early career, uh, you know, close to retirement and it's involuntary, I guess that's, that's kind of the key. Um, it's one thing if somebody says, you know what? I'm going to open a surf business in Nicaragua. Yep. I'm out yep. later. Got my 50 in. Got my 20 my 50. I'm gone. Yeah. Or even before that. Or even before that. They say, hey, you know what? This being away from home, all this shit, it's not worth it. No. Um, and I'm going to go be a air marshal or <laughs> you know what, whatever it is you're going to go be. Yeah. I'm going to go be a, a, a guide, a hunting guide. Yeah. Um, or, um, yeah, work at the – I'm going to be a mechanic or what all these things that people do they 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 leave the business all the time after long times and it's a conscious choice and we we typically are proud of that person mm-hmm. um in most cases depending on whether or not they check in yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> or if they how much of the retire how close they were to retirement right you know and what did they give up um but when it's they got hit by a tree or um whatever it else that's where we're like really sympathetic man oh man they're cut down in the in their prime right. and they really still wanted to keep being on the crew and they can't anymore um you know they're they're um they wanted to keep jumping um and that accident the an- their ankle never healed right or yeah whatever and now they they can't do it the thing they want to do i feel like we're sympathetic in that instance i don't, I don't think they get many rocks thrown out. Yeah, exactly. But in retirement, which is the same thing in in invo- for some people, an yep. involuntary separation. Mm-hmm. A lot of us are real comfortable throwing rocks at them. Mm-hmm. Um and I just I I and again, it matters how much of your identity is wrapped up cuz man, when, when people are all in, that's how we get crews to do amazing things. Yeah. That's how we, you know, like it doesn't make sense that we have people that will miss anniversaries and will miss birthday. Like it doesn't make sense. Like <laughs> how is it that, to go do ridiculous, crazy, hard stuff? Yeah. Um, obviously it makes sense somehow because 
it happens. Um, and there's great rewards. Um, but there's also a, a bunch of danger there. And I just, I don't know. I don't know. I, every time I try and figure this out and diagram it, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, we, well, one, we're living it. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're, we're part of the deal, you know, and, and we've got, and we're heading, you know, on some sort of path towards whether it's a cliff or that 57 line we're going to cross, whatever it is eventually. Or some unknown. Or some unknown uh, smash. You know, the identity thing, I sit here and I look back and I, I can think of a, a highly respected hotshot soup in SoCal. I really looked up to, and he hit mandatory in the, in the mid-90s. 20 years of super tenant, started started a brand new crew. 20 years of soup, ran that crew until they kicked him, until he, see, my language. <laughs> there you go. Right? My language is until they kicked him out. Yeah. Well, he knew at 50, when he turned 57, he was going out. But from my perspective, sometimes I look at it like we call it, we have a name for it. It's called the 57 Golden Boot. Mm-hmm. All right. And so he got the boot, um, did a little tiny AD work. And passed away within less than two years. Um, not by getting smashed, just, you know, it was a heart attack. Um, his identity, you know, he was Superintendent 5. You know, he was known as whatever it is. He, that was him. That was his identity. And so I, I struggle, too, is this... I don't think being all in is a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. We want yeah. people to be all in. Yeah, or you can throw rocks at that and yeah. say, oh, yeah, you should have done that differently. See, you know, because the harsh thing to, to to say would be, what a waste. Right. And that's not, like, that's, there's there's no way that that's, no, a, you know no what I mean? Waste. That's, that's, um, that's a, a life filled with meaning or, you know what I mean? And I know we, we tend to put on rose colored glasses and to look, you know what I mean? Obviously it's not, it's not without hardship, yeah. but that's not an option. There's not a life without hardship just isn't an option. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's part of the deal. Um, but I feel like that sometimes that, that, that perspective is taken that if you're, if you're wrapped too tightly or there is such a thing as being wrapped too tightly or being too, too all in, mm. um, and and that there's 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 danger in in the job being who you are rather than what you do or i mean even that dichotomy that's not real we but we we make it that way yeah you you either are the job or you aren't as if there's no balance it's it's not that simple and it's not that black and white i think maybe maybe what we're talking about it the potential dangers is when you're all in all the time yeah and, and, and day night for all time Maybe that's what we're getting at. I know we're not looking for the answer, but when you're all in all the time, I was yeah. for a long time. You were. You talked yeah. about it. Right? Yeah. Now, being all in all the time and going on your furlough time to go check out training videos <laughs> and looking back on it kind of going and cringing a little bit, well, maybe that helped you get to where you are today by yeah. being all in all the time back then. Yeah, and maybe it helped instigate some of the pain of you know divorce or you know what i mean there's mm-hmm. just yep. yeah yeah it got me to where i am and that's you know that's not a bad thing but it, there's there's also some hard things in there that if i were to mentor somebody else it, you know i do feel like i would i if i had myself to talk to i would say no go go surfing <laughs> <laughs> you know which i i tried to do later on once yeah. i kind of got that perspective um, but how did you get that perspective? I, I had that reflected to me by a salty jumper that, mm-hmm. you know, asked me some pretty point blank questions. Um, and he, and not in, he, he was just trying to get to know me, yeah. you know, yeah. and then, um, in the process, um, I, I had to, I had to answer the question, which is, you know, what kind of, what kind of guy are you? What, you know, are you, you bait and bullets guy or fun in the sun guy, you know, as if those were the only two options. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> typical. Yeah. Do you, do you travel on in the winter and, uh, and, or, or chase bluebird days on the slopes right? or are you out, um, tracking deer and, um, working fish? Yeah, exactly. Those, those are pretty typical personas 
you know, um, and and then or there's the fire <laughs> fire person, the person that doesn't do either of those things, right? And um, chases the work, or you know, goes to goes to Florida to burn all winter or whatever, right. you know. Um, right. Do we throw rocks at those people, or do we encourage that? Yeah, and, and is it, that okay? Yeah, and is is there a, is there a problem or a consequence? And and in my instance, I had to look at that, and and because the the culture I was ent- entering at the time really valued um, diverse interests or experiences, um, you know what I mean. I wanted to be part of that club, and people were coming back talking about their travels and their um, or the you know the big animal that they um, missed. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so I, I did, and I, and I looked back at my, at my life at the time, and I did. I switched it around. I, I started to um, explore all the interests that I had um, outside of fire, which was a lot. I, you know, I had a life before fire. Um, it's, it's funny. I, I, I told myself I was, uh, you know, start, I was fighting fire um, to, to save money to go to art school. That was that was my story. I never made it to art school, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but the reason I wanted to go to art school is because, yeah, I you know, I was into painting and um, drawing and um, sculpture and you know, uh, writing all of that stuff. That was just that was kind of, and that's not something that had a whole lot of value when you get into the world of um, chainsaws and um, drip torches. Yeah, you know, um, and so I I dropped all that stuff. Um, until it, it, it just happened to be reflected back to me. Oh yeah, you don't, you, you, you're just into fire. And it was kind of condescending. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and I, I, I had to do some self-evaluation and I, I changed my course a little bit. Um, but, but that's interesting how, say you drop that stuff, because I think maybe that's what we do. You know, we have all this stuff we do, which is our identity pre-fire. Yeah. And, we, and we're just talking about fire here, but it could be anything mm-hmm. that, you, that you go all in on. And then when you get in a fire and then all of a sudden you're like, you had this awakening, like, this is it. This is the deal. This is what I want to do. This I'm going all in on this deal. And maybe it's conscious, maybe it's subconscious, but all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're all in. And subconsciously or unconsciously, you start dropping other things mm-hmm. because you can't be all in here and, and have all these other things and be in, all in over here. Or can you? I don't know whether it's at the beginning, like we've talked about, you don't talk too much about the middle, a little bit, kind of the middle is when you're, you're all in and you're into it. And then all of a sudden you get smashed. I think that's what we've talked a little bit about. Yeah. And I think some of those different, um, mirrors get, get held up, but yeah. I, I think there's an opportunity for, for shifting in there. You know, um, that's, that's where people become parents or, um, get married or get divorced or, um, or have those tragic, um, instances. And it's not strictly the middle. It's just somewhere in there, yeah. you know, it can happen all, and, and how you handle those things and how, whether or not you're, you're going to change your path at that point. Um, it just has to do with, um, you know, your experience to that point and, 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 and who you are. Um, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying is like, what's our responsibility in, in talking about this stuff with people that, that are, that are early on Mm -hmm. or halfway through, what is your responsibility when you see people investing? If, if, If you're the one in the office because you're the super, the captain or the, um, FMO or whatever, and you're there all winter because that's the job. And you and and you see the young Travis coming in to check out videos. What's what's your role there? Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't. That's the one I don't know the answer to. Yeah. Because I know what I what I would say to myself. <laughs> with hindsight. Well, yeah, with the benefit of hindsight. Yes. Um, but um, yeah, I don't. Um, because there is that that um, that potential to have it get so wrapped up in in self worth, I think that's the danger. If doing this job is where you get your value, 
you know, a big piece of what you, what you think makes you matter in the world. I just feel like that's dangerous. And I think there's, there's, there's ways to invest in other, other things. You know, they, we always say diversify your investments, you know, don't have everything in C or G G or F. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Don't put it all 100% in the stock or bonds or whatever. And that's the thing that I feel like it's it's okay to warn people about, huh. the danger of not diversifying some of your identity, you know what I mean? And and there's so many ways to do that. Um, I don't know how to make, how to get young people to, to, to listen to that, because mm-hmm. a lot of people just do it naturally. Yeah. They, they have all kinds of different interests, you yeah. know what I mean? They... They go help build houses in um, Rwanda, or mm-hmm. you know what I mean, and they and and they've got some other aspects. Or people are um, have uh, faith or spirituality, or um, you know they're they're invested in the ranch that they grew up on, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean, or, or you know what I mean. And that's that's great. We should support that. That's one thing is when people have it, support it. Right. Don't don't. don't. Don't throw rocks at them for doing that. Yeah, and don't try and take it away. Don't say, oh, you know, you need to be more loyal to the agency or the crew or whatever. Right. The the part the part that I struggle with is when you see somebody that you feel like, you know, has all their eggs, all their identity eggs <laughs> in the fire basket. Right. Um, what does that conversation look like? That's the tough part. I Yeah, I don't. Without... Um, suppressing their engagement and being all in, you know, you can still be all in and diversify. Yes. I guess that's a, that's a good message. Maybe that's the message. Maybe that's part of it. Man, I love that you come in and check training videos out. I I love that you sharpen the saw on your lunch break, you know? Um, I love that you're filling the cigs after work. You know, all these things are wonderful things, but it, it would be beneficial for you currently and in the future, if, if you diversify a little bit more in, in your, in your identity in your life and in, in who you are, whether that's, I see you got a, you know, a Jeep, you love four wheeling, blah, 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 you know? And, and I think that's what I'm saying is maybe can we shift what all in means hmm. is the way to be resilient, be, if you really want to be all in diversify, Yeah, you know what I mean? Do, right. do some other things because to be all in, to be resilient, to be the best and, and, and contribute the most, we need you to actually diversify, you know, take breaks, turn in your, it's, it's, it's the same thing as like a hot day, right? For the crew to keep digging, you have to take regular breaks yep. more than you normally would. Because it doesn't do anybody any good if you go balls to the wall for, <laughs> you know, two hours and then now you're now you are now you are taking a big break. Yeah, now you're now you're contributing nothing. Now you're actually taking stuff from the crew because we got to deal with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that same concept I feel like is applicable on a grand ground grand scale. You know what I mean? If you're if you're all in all the time, you're actually a liability. So are we saying? I think what we're saying is where we're getting to here is diversify your identity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's okay to be, you know, all in and, and, and you know, have the stickers on your truck and rock the hat and rock the crew colors and all that stuff. Encourage that. That's wonderful if that's if that's if that's who you are, if that's your identity, but diversify it. Don't just be that all the time. Because um, there are things we have control of and things we have no control of in life. And one of these many things we toss from getting smashed, we have no control over. Mm -hmm. It's how we, how resilient we are and how we react to those physical and emotional um, times when we get smashed. Because you will. We're human. You stay in this business. may not be work-related, but you're going to get smashed eventually, physically or emotionally. And if you're not, if your identity is not diversified, and if that smash is all about the job, um, and that's who you are, then that can be devastating. Absolutely. It can take down the best of us. Exactly. And I think the consequences of that, that we, 
you know, we're only starting to really delve into, I think that, and obviously none of this stuff is, you know, directly cause and effect black and white or anything like that. Nope. But some of the things are, um, addiction, um, suicide, um, just e- mental, emotional health in general, depression. Nope. Um, these are all these things that actually require vulnerability to deal with. And that's not something we teach, you know, that's not really something that's, um, part of. That's not a valued trait. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> you can't, you can't get around those other things without, without confronting that. Yeah. Um, and, and diversifying your identity, I think m- m- gives you multiple approaches. Yeah. Um, and, and not diversifying, it's not a direct, again, it's not a cause and effect thing, but sometimes, trying to deal with that, especially if there's a time at, at those times when we get smashed, um, emotionally, um, physically, and, and, and you can't, you can't go through, you can't stay long in this business without having that proximity. You know what I mean? If, if, if you were in the business in 2013, you had some sort of emotional reaction to you are now. Yep. If you were in the business in 94, you know what I mean? And that happens every year. Mm-hmm. Um, on, it's just a matter of scale. Right. Right. Um, and, and we're, I don't want to say coping with it. We're, we're, we're existing through that stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and whether or not, um, how you, how you exist, how, whether or not you cope, I guess, um, is at least a little bit tied to how diverse your identity is. Yeah, uh, that's right on. I think if you're, you know, I, I, I'm a case example of someone that's been all in all the time and you start dropping those other things off that were part of your identity when you start feeling like you do this for free because yeah. you love the job so much and, and it's so important to you and it becomes such a part of you and your identity is your crew colors and your hat and, you know, the, the, the gap you work in and the cruise you work around, all that stuff, the module flavor you pick, wherever that be, might be. And then, and then you do get smashed. You know, I, I got smashed, you know, 21 years into the game. And when one of my hotshots was killed in line of duty and, but I was that guy that was all in completely all in when that happened. Fortunately, it was towards the end of the season. Not that you ever get to pick when you get smashed, yeah. but you know, getting through that, and then once your 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 identity, which is your crew, which is your your pe- your people, and once they <clears throat> go away for the winter, whatever it is, and then it's just you, and your identity has been smashed. Uh, that is a dangerous path, and that that some people recover from, and if you're not diversified, some may not. And, you know, I, I spent a few months in a really bad place and getting worse every day. And, uh, it took, it took some friends to help, help me without overstepping their bounds, you know, without like, you know, grabbing me by the, by the collar. Um, but to finally get me to, um, uh, go do something else for a while and stop working because that's all I knew was work. So I just worked more and, by doing that other thing, by going, hanging out in a different country, mm-hmm. you know, with uh, warm weather and cold drinks mm-hmm. for a few weeks and not think about work and any of that, not to make believe it didn't happen, but just to do something else. And that, I look back on that now and that is, that was like this first opening step to diversify my identity. Mm. But I had to get smashed to do it. And it was brutal. And, but from that point forward, I wasn't just the all in all the time hotshot guy. I, I was able to, uh, diversify my identity is what we're talking about. You know, I took time off in the, I didn't take time off in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> I took right. time. Go, didn't go that far. No, I, no, I couldn't do that. <laughs> but I did take time off on the shoulder seasons where I didn't do that before. Sure. No, we got to hire. No, we got to close out. No, we got to open up the station. So I took some more time off in the shoulder seasons and 
have continued on that path today to try and <clears throat> diversify my identity. I love being a hotshot, even to this day. Even after going through what I went through, I love being part of this community. But I'm a case example of, of when you're all in all the time and that's all you are and who you are and you get smashed, hundred different ways to get smashed, but when you get smashed, man, that is a dangerous place to be. Yeah. And I think as um, as a community, as a fire service, we're getting better at trying to help people. That's why we're talking here today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? That's why we're talking about it. And this. we don't know, you know what I mean? We could, we th- in five years, we could look back at this and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe that we were... <laughs> you, we were saying that stuff. Pull that off the internet. Yeah, exactly. Get, oh my, get, get rid of that. Get rid of it. We were so ignorant, you know. But that's okay because we're, it's but, it's the beginning and that. Or, we're trying what? to stimulate thought and conversation about this. I mean, we here we are at the Lesson Learn Center, and we're struggling with this. Yeah, we don't yeah. have the answers. No. You know, we're we're trying to write an issue of two more chains about this, and we thought we just get together and talk about it. And and you know, I look at the. There's some agencies out there right now that are building programs, train the trainer programs called emotional first aid. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> what, five years ago, 10 years yeah. ago. Yeah, exactly. You, did, you didn't even, the word emotion in our vocabulary wasn't even used, you know, in the yeah. fire culture. So we're, we're trending in a better direction. We're not yeah. there. We've got a long ways to go. We're really in this infancy of sense making of yeah. how do we, um, um, physically and emotionally and mentally become more resilient and still be all in. Well, for me, it comes down to, at least right now, diversify your identity and don't throw rocks. I, I think those are two things we can write down and try and try and follow. Those are two great things to do. Well, what do you think of that? There's a lot there, huh? Do you have any other thoughts on identity, why it matters? If so, let us know. Go to wildfirelessons.net, hit the Contact Us button. There you'll find our phone numbers and email addresses. Also, you can get us on Facebook and Twitter. And we're still waiting for our very first postcard from a listener. 3265 East Universal Way, Tucson, Arizona, 85756. Send us a postcard with your thoughts. For more on the topic of identity, be sure to check out the fall 2017 issue of Two More Chains. In this issue, we do a remarkable interview with Wally Ochoa, a Sawyer from the Wainema Interagency Hotshot Crew, who was critically injured in the fall of 2014 on the Freeze Out Ridge Fire. As you'll see, Wally's story is about much more than his accident. It's about identity and who he was before and who he's become since. Wally's perspective adds another layer to this complex conversation of what identity is and why it matters and why we should all be thinking about it. Finally, and as always, thanks a ton for your time. Recently, I gave Travis a ring to see what he was up to for the holidays. Hey, man, what are your plans for the holidays? I'm going to open a surf business in Nicaragua. I'm out. Later. I knew it! It's all that surf music we've been playing.